Hello, Interwebs. Welcome to Let's Fix Computers. Um, I've got I'm bench testing a uh, a platform that I've got here. I'm about to cobble together a game a spare gaming rig from secondhand parts. I've got this Sapphire two uh, eighty X Vapo X here or Vapor X, and as you can see, one of the fans doesn't work. Uh, interestingly, it briefly works when you turn on the computer. If I turn this off, just stop the fan, and then turn it on again. Like that, as you can see, it spins for a moment and then it stops. Now, I've looked around on the internet and um, uh, I've also tested this in another computer and no, once you warm the card up, it does not kick in after a while. I took the card up to like 85 degrees and that fan did not spin up. Um, and it was really loud because this fan was winding up to almost full speed to compensate for, for the heat coming out of the card because the, uh, the R9-280X produces more heat than a small star. So, um, most people on the internet, this seems to be a very common fault with these ones. Um, they're saying that it's a dying fan. Um, so, I'm going to go with that option. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to rob the fan off of this old MSI card I've got here. I'm going to take this one off and try and ghetto mount it on there. And we'll see if that sorts it out. The card still works fine. And, you know, this fan just spins up to compensate. But these cards are not the quietest of cats when they work, let alone when they're down one fan. And I would like this uh, this this spare computer to be tolerable. So uh, yeah, we're going to try and do a bodge fix on this and see how that goes. So uh, let's take this card out, um, get it on the bench, and we're going to take the cooler apart and try and bodge in a replacement fan. All right, let's start by taking. Right, can we get the? I think if we undo these screws, I can see between the fan blades. We might just be able to uh, and take these screws off here. I think we may be able to remove this plastic cowl. Ah, we've got to get those ones in there. Um, well, let's start taking stuff out just to see if we can get away with doing this. Oh, you know what, fuck it, let's take the cooler off. I don't know why I'm hesitating there. The worst thing we have to do about taking the cooler off is replace the thermal paste, and I can live with that. So, off it comes. Come yeah, on, oh, there we go. All right. Hmm, the thermal paste is bad, but functional. Right, so the two fans both go into the same place by the looks of things. Something is going on there, mind you. There's something going on there with the fan. I'm not sure what that's about. Maybe a thermal sensor that only cuts the fan in at a certain temperature. I wonder whether we can bypass that and that might fix it. Hmm. Cool. I've already dusted this thing out. It just shows you how the dust gets trapped in these things. Oh, no, I lie. That's nothing. But it's curious that they've put another connector in there. I wonder what the deal with that is. Hmm. Oh, well. Right, so this is the fan that doesn't work. It doesn't... The bearings... Oh, to be honest, the working fan... The bearings on the working fan feel much worse than the one that doesn't work. So that ain't the problem. Right, I wonder if we can spin these things up. I might just try putting some voltage onto these pins and seeing if we can make the fan spin, just so we can confirm that it, they work. If I just send voltage to the fans, they should spin up, um, regardless of a lack of PWM signal. So let's give that a go. Now, what do I think the pin out on this is going to be? Okay, so... I've noticed that there is um, there is only a yellow wire going to the not working fan, interestingly enough. That's an interesting observation. Um, and the yellow wire will be the uh, the speed sensor, the tachometer, that detects how far the RPM of the fan. Um, so that means that the yellow wire is tack. My guess is that black is ground, red is power, and then blue will be PWM. 
So uh, the um, the speed the uh, the speed what not the speed sense but the speed select. So uh, the signal that tells the fan how fast to spin. Uh, so yeah, if we put 12 volts onto red and black, those fans should wind up to full speed. So well, let's do that and see what happens. Okay, so we're going to start on 9 volts just so we don't blow anything up. Okay, right, that's a, that's a lot. The fans are actually wandering around. Okay, let's slow that down and just see what happens. Good grief. That's pulling over uh, 0.6 of an amp. Right, so let's voltage throttle these down. Don't know what voltage these fans were supposed to be. If they were supposed to be 5 volts, then that would have been quite funny. Let's bring it right down. Actually, you know what, let's cut the voltage and let's see what voltage they'll actually turn on at. So that's a uh, nil. There's one volt. Two volts. All oh, they're trying, I saw that. Okay, and that's 2.7. And let's just wind that back to two and a half. Okay. They look like they're spinning at different speeds to me. I don't know what I'm proving here, I'm experimenting. Let's try something else. That's two volts. No, and it's not enough. And two and a half. Give it a nudge. Yeah, both of those fans work just fine. So why is this one not turning on then? Because if we're talking about whether the fans are alive or dead, clearly this fan works just fine. There's clearly no mechanical fault with the motor there. So what's the dealio? Uh, oh yeah, no, we're okay. They're 12 volt fans, so I didn't just break them. So why did one fan not spin up? I can't see any reason for that. I can't see any means here of independently controlling the fans. The only exception to the rule is, again, the, the problem fan has the, the yellow wire on it, the tack wire. I wonder if you can switch off the fan by shorting that to ground or something like that. So how's this for an idea? We don't need the, ta we don't need the, the, um, the fan sensor pin. I don't really care about that. I don't care how fast the, the, uh, the fan is spinning. Uh, I just care about how fast it's being told to spin. And the software will tell me what uh, what duty cycle the fans are being told to spin at. So when you see your fans percentage, that's the duty cycle that they're being told to run at. So let's disconnect. Let's disconnect that um, speed sense pin and see if this fan starts working. Now comes the issue of how to test it. Uh, I think we're going to have to put the heatsink back on. So let's clean this thermal paste, put some new stuff on, and then I can put the heatsink back on, and we'll reassemble the fan. And I'd actually wager, I think it's going to work. That's what I reckon. Uh, right, let's clean that up. So in case you're wondering, the, uh, the vapor chamber you can actually see it on this cooler. You see the orange bit, the copper bit. You can see that that copper core is contained within the aluminium heat sink. And that is a vapor chamber. And basically it's a hollow, these heat pipe, it's a heat pipe that's just been flattened down into a pancake. So that uh, copper core is actually got a hollow bit in it, which might be that bit, or it might be spread out across there. I'm not sure which. And that will be filled with um, uh, that will be filled with a gas or a fluid that evaporates uh, very easily. And um, by having it spread out like this, it basically spreads the heat. So obviously, this GPU has got a very very hot center, um, and the vapor chamber spreads that heat out across the bottom of the heatsink. 
So instead of having to, um, instead of the heat sink having to radiate heat from right there, it's actually got to radiate, it spreads that heat out all across this bottom bit. So then it's radiating up from the whole bottom of the heat sink, uh, which is what the vapor chamber is supposed to do. However, heat pipes do exactly the same thing, except heat pipes will take the heat from here. Uh, a vapor chamber will take the heat from here to here. However, a heat pipe will take the heat from here all the way over to here. So a heat pipe is vastly superior to a vapor chamber, which is why stock blowers still suck, no matter how many times you hear people banging on about vapor chambers. Vapor chambers are the poor man's heat pipe. I mean, I guess obviously a heat sink like this that combines both of them should theoretically be the ultimate uh, combination. However, personally, uh, just stick heat pipes on it. It's all you need, that's fine. Right, Arctic MX-4, on it goes. Right, I'm just putting on these middle four screws to hold the heat sink on for now because uh, I'll need to take it back off again to fit the fans back. Uh, I probably should have cleaned these fans and just put them on and gone all or nothing actually because I'm just going to have to do all of this again. I mean, I won't put new thermal paste on a second time. That stuff will be fine for a second application, but uh, whatever. Anyway, let's plug this in and we'll just see what the fans do. Uh, it might be handy um, to have these fans off because um, with this exposed, I can actually probe the pins and see if it's getting anything at all. Uh, right, let's leave those wires hanging out there. Make sure you're pointing off into the air and flapping in the breeze. And we'll just perch that on top of there. There we go. Right, I think, I wonder if I can just put some power into this graphics card and it will start. Let's find out. So I'm going to plug in the PCI Express lines and we'll see if it will start when PCI Express, when, um, yeah, and we'll see if it will start when PSU power is applied to it. It might need a motherboard power on signal, so we may have to, uh, we may have to put this all in the board and everything. All right. Okay, and I'm gonna jumpstart the power supply by shorting the green pin to ground. And now we'll switch it on at the back. And no is the answer. The power supply is on, but the fan hat, the graphics card has clearly not powered up. So yeah, we do actually need to put it in the motherboard. Sad face. Okay. Uh, okay, it's fine. This is fine. Okay, right. Let's get this roughly into place and put like a screw in it or something. and stick in a HDMI cable just so I can see if it's posting. That should be enough. Okay, power on. And jump start. Boop. Still nothing. Okay. I suppose I could also... Um, I suppose I could also ditch the PWM signal to it, but that will set it on full speed. That's assuming this thing runs at, uh, that these things run at a full 12 volts anyway. Um, I wonder, if that's plugged into the board, can I get my probes in there? If I could probe it with a multimeter, I could get a bit more information. Might be able to do it from the other side of the desk. Let me try laying down the water cooling rad we've got on this thing. Don't ask why I have a water cooler connected to it at the moment, I just do. Just uh, just roll with it for now. I think I can get that from the other side of the desk. Let's uh, rearrange. All right.
right, okay, we've got it into a position where I can actually probe it now, so let's see what we can get. I've got to be careful of this dude that's spinning. He's right in my way, but whatever. Right, so how much voltage is coming out there? Okay, full fat, 12 volts. Am I able to probe? Maybe. I wonder if I can get in and probe the PWM pin. Right, 25 hertz, 25 kilohertz. Okay, there's our PWM signal going to the fan. And as you can see, uh, where the card is running passive at the moment, the fan is heating up and we're actually up to 50%. So what's the deal? It's getting a PWM signal. It's getting 12 volts, which is there. Why doesn't the fan spin? I don't, make, I don't understand. All the signals it needs are there. And when we manually fed in the signals, it worked. Okay, so let's do another test. And this time, I'm going to disconnect the PWM signal wire from the fan. And we'll see how it responds to that. Um, I think the fan is going to work, but I think it's going to run at maximum speed which is obviously a bad thing. That's going to make it um, horrifyingly loud. So this isn't really a solution, but if it works, then what this will mean is that it's not processing the PWM signal. So uh, let's get this dude out. All right, there we go. That pin's being a little bitch, but I disconnected it from uh, from the fan side instead. Okay, that and to that. Okay, right. So, next test. No PWM signal to this fan. Um, this fan does still have its PWM signal, so we should now see differing speeds on the two fans. Let's power it on and see what it does. So just as expected, this one's running at full tilt, and this one is speed controlled. That's pushing air, and that one is belting it out. So basically, this fan is not processing a PWM signal. That is what is at fault here. Um, this one is. Now, the interesting thing is, is look when I was looking online, on all the other examples of this fault that I saw, it's always this fan. Um, and... Uh, this fan is always fine and interestingly I think the fans are two separate models because this fan here This doesn't have the taco signal out, but also look it has another It has another power line out that goes to power the LED on the side So they've actually got a separate model fan on this side uh, That has the additional voltage output to the LEDs and that will require an extra circuit in here to do that So this is a different model fan so it looks like it's just this particular model of fan that is defective or is prone to failure. However, because we've detected that all of the signals are getting to the fan, if we change the fan out for a different one, then the fault will be resolved. So therefore, what I'm going to do is I'm going to butcher the other graphics card I've got, put a different fan in, and that's going to solve the issue. And I'm going to go for that because I know it's going to work. Right, just in case anyone's curious, here's a... Uh... Before the graphics card heats back up again, here's another example of the PWM signal. And as you can see, while the fan is on low speed, the duty cycle is at 35%. And notice on that square wave, notice how the peaks are further apart. And as the, fans, as the fan ramps up, those peaks will get longer, they'll get wider, so the fan is on for more often than it's off. And by switching the fan on and off really, really fast and adjusting for how long it's on or off for is how you adjust the speed of a modern fan. And the reason why we do it this way instead of by voltage is that if you control it by voltage, as you saw when I was testing it on just the power supply, uh, you have a much, much less control. It will be, you, you have a much narrower field of control and you can only take the fans down to a fairly 
moderate speed before they cut out. And so that's what the PWM signal actually does. That's what it's all about. Right, let's steal a fan from this old thing. This is an old uh, 6850, I think, which is on its last legs as well. This this is one of my old cards, and I took it out because it intermittently doesn't post. Um, so, yeah, it used to be in a shop workstation. It's basically a test card now, so I don't really care if it doesn't have a cooler on it. However, I do care if I can't get that out. I don't want to take the heat sink off of this one because lazy. There we go. That's you out. And now, hopefully, if I can get that fan off, you might be able to do all of this without removing the heat sink. And if we're really, really lucky, these screw holes will line up with the same screw holes that are on the 280X, which would be awesome. Aha, one fan. Bam. And as you can see, this is also a four pin fan, so it's PWM controlled. Wow. That bearing feels pretty crap, but I don't care. If it works, it works. Cooling is cooling. All right, let's take off our uncontrollable fan. which conveniently has a plug on it. There we go. We'll have a look at this guy in a minute. We'll take the label off and see if there's anything to see. Right. Can I... Uh, uh, we might have to... Uh, it's going to suck if we have to rewire this. Let's get creative in a sec. Firstly, let's see if the fan itself will go in. We'll worry about the wiring in a sec. So let's go there. I think that screw pitch is larger. Yeah, it is. Weak. Okay, can I get like one screw in and ghetto mount? Maybe is the answer to that. Let's try for the ghetto mount. Hmm. We're going to have to modify the fan holes as well. Ah, uh, weak. Okay. Ah. Uh. So what we can do is, um, what I'll do is I'll get the Dremel and I will just put the drill bit, I'll put a drill bit in the Dremel and just go eh, toward the center slightly on each hole and just elongate those holes slightly toward the center and then it'll fit in and I can center the fan. The fan physically fits in the cowl, um, I mean by, by a whisker, but it fits, which is, which is the important thing. So um, as long as we get the holes lined up, that'll be fine and it shouldn't foul. Um, so yeah, I'm confident that it goes in. Um, we've just got to make sure that those holes line up. Okay, there's my elongated screw holes. I was probably a little bit vicious there, but with ghetto mounting, so who cares? Let's trial fit that again and see if those screw holes line up. So there's one, there's two, and there's three. I think that's going to work just, it's a tight fit but I think we can do it. And the fan is clear, nice. So I'm just going to give that a bit of GVH on the back just to try and settle it. And then let's tighten those screws as best I can. This really is a ghetto mount. I wouldn't call these screws in properly, but it's it's not gonna fall out. And it's not going to rattle, which is the concern. Ooh, 
Right, okay, we'll have to try and flip that on the card because this plastic may flex slightly once it's um, uh, screwed onto the heatsink. Uh, but first, we're going to brush out all that crud on the back because hopefully uh, we're fitting it for the last time. There we go, it's a Sapphire MSI now. That's how it works, right? Right, uh, okay, we still need to source out uh, wiring. Now I'm not, talk not worried about this cable being hugely long because I can just like, I can wrap that up in that area there, that's fine. Uh, but we've got to make that fit into there. Um, so, and these pins are wide and flat. It's a very strange connector. Um, hmm. Right, I've been trying to sort of mash these connectors together and this 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 isn't working. Um the I can the pins will go out, will go onto each other, however, I just can't get the clearance between the pins to make sure that there's not going to be any shorts there. So I'm just gonna lop off both the ends of these cables and just solder the damn things together. And then we'll get a nice reliable connection that I know isn't gonna break. Okay, right, let's connect this all up again, and we'll just do a quick test run on the cooler before we mount it all back onto the card. Uh, this should work now, hopefully, so power on at the power supply, and begin. There we go, we have two spinning fans. Good. All right, so there we have it. There's our repaired graphics card with two working fans. So uh, we'll need to burn test it, but um, this, this system isn't ready to go yet. Um, but uh, when it is, we'll give it a whirl and make sure it's okay. And I'll let you know if it's not, I'll edit it in at the end or something or other. However, yeah, blah, blah, blah. Right, so the last thing we're gonna do now, um, because um, this whole video obviously has been extremely long and convoluted just for the sake of replacing a busted fan on a graphics card. So I'm just gonna take the back off of uh, this fan and we're just gonna see if we can see any visible issues with it. See if we can find out why this particular fan always seems to be the one to fail. Because as I said, when I Google searched this before starting this video, everywhere I looked, it was always this fan that was failed on this graphics card. The same one every time. So yeah, it looks like I really wasn't the only one. And it would be fun to see if we can just identify exactly what fails on it. Right, so I've just gouged out the back of the bearing here. So that's the back of the spindle. And this is the clip that holds it all in. So you ruin the fan doing this. These things are not designed to be serviceable. But as you can see now, if we get this circlip off the back like that, we should now be able to lift that off. And there we go. 
So there's the permanent magnet on the inside of the rotor. And then here we've got the four coils and these things get pulsed on in sequence, which pushes the magnet around on the rotor. And so I should be able to peel this hub off of this back plate now. So let's get this dude out. All right, well, here is as, as much of the board as I could expose anyway. And um, uh, there's, there's not as much to see as I'd hoped. Um, so there's four big through hole bits. So um, uh, let me get a pointing device here. So these big through hole blobs here, that's where the bottom of, the, um, of each coil comes into the system. Then we've got a controller chip here. So presumably that is sequencing the coils to come on in turn. Uh, and then the blue wire, that is our PWM signal. Now that comes up to here and that goes through, it looks like it's got um, a, uh, either a, a pull up or a pull down to, um, uh, to either the live or the ground rail, possibly not sure where that's going. But more importantly, it goes over to here, up to this dude here, Q1, that's gonna be a transistor. So it looks like the PWM signal actually just does all the switching just via that transistor. And I would wager that that guy goes all the way up the top and actually just controls the VC, the, you know, the main, uh, the main power line on the board and literally just switches the whole thing off really fast. Uh, it wouldn't surprise me if it's that simple. I assume that the PWM control would be done in this chip. However, you can see that this wire, that trace clearly goes all the way up to here and clearly does not just go straight over to here. So it looks like that might be the case. Uh, then that guy there, that's going to be our speed sensor. That's cut through the board there. Um, so that actually pokes out the other side. If we flip this guy over, there you go. You can see that poking through there. So that's picking up the spin of the magnet on the other side. So that's, that is then outputting a pulse to indicate the rotation speed of the fan. Uh, and that's about it. So we can't see what has failed here. Um, it's possible that this guy is, is knackered, Q1. It, if that is if that is knackered and is not switching on and off properly, then the fan might be off all the time. When we first turned on the card when it was broken, we got a an initial twitch and then nothing. And what's probably going on there is initially the fan controller will output a 100% duty cycle to get the fan up to speed, and then like half a second later it will cut down to normal operation. So initially this thing would twitch. Oh, whoops, not knocking the camera there. So initially this thing will twitch as it spins up, then as soon as the PWM signal drops below a roughly 80% is what people were saying, this guy is not switching on and off fast enough or not switching on and off properly to actually get the fan going properly. So that's my guess as to what's happened to this thing. But I'm kind of, uh, I'm kind of spitting in the breeze really. So anyway, uh, I think that's about it. So that's how we fix the fan on this thing. Thanks for watching everyone, I hope that was interesting. I'll see you all next time. Goodbye for now.